I woke up in a hospital bed, disoriented. I was supposed to be on my way home from shopping. Where am I? I asked the nurse. She explained that I had been rear-ended by a car and urgently transported to the hospital. My husband rushed in and exclaimed, Why are you still lying on the bed? Let's go home, get discharged now, and make my dinner. If you can't fulfill your wife's duties, I'll divorce you. I couldn't believe what I had just heard. Who says that to their wife, especially when she's bandaged up and in pain? It was unbelievable. In that moment, I lost all my feelings for a husband who didn't seem to care about me at all. I started preparing to leave him. He was certain that I, as a housewife, couldn't possibly divorce him. Little did he know, he would be the one struggling if I brought up divorce. My name is Lisa. I became a housewife after marrying Daniel, following his wish. I never disliked my job and my hard work had started paying off, putting me in an important position with talks of a promotion and reshuffle ahead. When I shared the news of the promotion with Daniel, he immediately insisted that I become a housewife after marriage, convinced we could get by on his salary with some savings. Overwhelmed by his passion, I quit my job. My coworkers and bosses were disappointed, but it was important for me to align with Daniel as a couple. After I quit, Daniel started to assert his superiority because he was the breadwinner, reminding me that I couldn't live without him. Looking back, he probably pushed for me to quit because he feared I might earn more than him with the promotion on the horizon. Despite this, I devoted myself to supporting Daniel's work and making our home comfortable. I managed meals, considering his schedule, and ensured perfect cleanliness. Yet Daniel couldn't resist complaining. Tonight's dinner was a bit bland, he'd say. I'd explain my reasoning, but he'd always find something to nitpick. Over time, he started coming home later, reeking of women's perfume. When I asked about his late nights and health, he'd brush me off, irritated. I have a lot going on at work, he'd snap. What exactly are you doing during the day? I felt compelled to justify my every move, detailing my chores and activities. His mistrust grew, and he began demanding a daily schedule of my whereabouts. Hey, what are you going to do today? He'd inquire with a suspicious tone. I plan to do the laundry and cleaning in the morning, then go grocery shopping in the afternoon. When are you going to be back from shopping? Daniel asked. I can't say for sure, maybe around four o'clock, I replied. Okay, got it. Don't be later than four. I'm going to call home to check on you, he said. Why would you do that? To make sure you're not slacking off on your housework, Daniel replied, starting to manage my schedule down to the hour. That day, my shopping took longer than expected, and I rushed home on my bicycle. It was already past four o'clock. I need to hurry back home or Daniel will get mad at me again, I thought to myself, feeding up. In my hurry, I didn't notice the car approaching from behind. The next moment, I felt an impact on my back. Before I knew it, I found myself lying in a hospital bed, trying to sit up, feeling pain throughout my body. A nurse, noticing my consciousness, hastily called for a doctor. Oh, you're awake? You were hit by a car from behind, the doctor explained. According to him, I was rear-ended while riding my bike, fainted unconscious from the impact, and an ambulance brought me to the hospital. Fortunately, there was no bleeding or head injury, just full body bruises. Though I was in pain, there were no fractures or lasting damage, and I was told I could be discharged in a few weeks. Relieved, I checked my phone and saw a slew of missed calls from Daniel. I need to call Daniel. He must be worried sick, I muttered to myself. The nurse quickly intervened, saying, I've already notified your husband. Unfortunately, he couldn't pick up the call, so I left a message on his voicemail. I might have made him worry. She explained, your wife was in a car accident and has been urgently transported to our hospital. The nurse had left that message in her voicemail, prompting me to call my husband. Hey Daniel, it's me Lisa. What the hell are you doing? Why aren't you coming home? I asked urgently. I did listen to the voicemail. You're awake now, right? So you can come home, can't you? Daniel replied impatiently. I can't come home. I was in a car accident. I'll be staying in the hospital for a few weeks, I explained, hoping he would understand the severity. If you're being hospitalized, what? Daniel's voice trailed off, and it seemed he had assumed my injuries weren't serious. I'm coming right now, he abruptly said, and hung up. An hour later, Daniel burst into my hospital room. Lisa, he exclaimed. I felt relieved to see him, but his next words left me frozen. How long are you going to lie there? Let's go home, he demanded. What? Go home. What on earth are you saying? 
I couldn't hide my confusion as I responded. I can't go home. I was in a car accident today. I reminded him. Just because it was an accident doesn't mean you're knocking on death's door. You're fine. Discharge yourself immediately and make my dinner, he insisted, his tone growing more impatient. Can't you see these bandages? How do you expect me to cook in this state? I protested. You're overreacting with this hospital stay. I bet if I hadn't come to fetch you, you'd just be lazily lying on the bed. Here I am, worn out from work and you won't even cook dinner. That's unacceptable as a wife, Daniel retorted sharply. Look, the hospital says. I need to stay for a few weeks. It's not about being lazy, it's about getting necessary treatment, I insisted. Use any excuse you want, but if you think I'll let you off the hook for housework, you're wrong. If this isn't working for you, I'm okay with getting a divorce, Daniel retorted. That's ridiculous. I can't possibly do housework in this state, I argued. Well then, divorce it is, he said coldly. Daniel seemed to care more about having his housework done than the fact that I had been in a car accident. I felt myself falling out of love with him quickly. Having discovered his true feelings, I made up my mind on the spot. All right, I said. Hearing this, Daniel smirked, seemingly victorious. That's right, you should understand that my word is law. Seeing me still not trying to move, Daniel started to lose his patience. Hey, how long are you going to keep lying around? Start getting ready to leave. Just as Daniel tried to forcibly get me up, the doctor entered the room. What on earth do you think you're doing? He demanded. I was just about to take her home, Daniel responded. Upon hearing this, the doctor became livid. What nonsense. There's a thorough examination scheduled for tomorrow, so she's not allowed to leave. Hearing this, Daniel scoffed at me. If there's an examination, and I'll wait two or three days, I'll stay at my parents' house in the meantime, so make sure you're home by then. As Daniel left the room, I watched him go with a cold gaze. Then I called my lawyer. I didn't have a single shred of affection left for him. Hello, I would like to proceed with that matter, I said, calling my lawyer from the hospital bed. I continued making a few more phone calls, steadily preparing for what was to come. Three days later, Daniel called my cell. Lisa, why the hell aren't you home yet? He demanded. Are you back home from your parents' house? I asked. Yeah, I am, he grumbled. The examination's over, isn't it? Then stop lounging around and get back to the chores that have piled up. Daniel didn't even bother to ask me about the medical test results. He didn't seem to care about my health one bit. Daniel, you've been staying at your parents' place all this time, right? I asked calmly. I told you already, didn't I? So what? Did you happen to check the mail sent to your parents' house? I inquired. Mail? What on earth did you send? He asked, sounding confused. Divorce papers, I said. In fact, I had a lawyer send the divorce papers, already signed by me, to Daniel's parents' house. The divorce papers, he repeated, surprised. Why are you surprised? You were the one who said, let's get a divorce, weren't you? I reminded him. Daniel sighed, as if mocking me. I never thought you were that stupid. Do you think you can live on your own after divorcing me? Who provides for you? My decision was definitely the right one. I can't start doing house chores right after the accident. I need to take better care of my health. That's why I decided to divorce you. I stated firmly. You think you can make a living after divorcing me? You rushed into this decision. Daniel laughed loudly and then hung up the phone. But Daniel had no idea what was coming next. The following day, his parents rushed to the hospital in a panic. We saw what our son has done. It's terrible, they said as they entered my hospital room, bowing their heads in apology. No, it's not your fault, I replied calmly. You're right, the person who needs to apologize is Daniel himself, my father-in-law said. He immediately called Daniel. Come to the hospital immediately, he ordered. Daniel, not understanding what was going on but hearing the seriousness in his father's voice, arrived in my room within minutes. Dad, what's going on? Why'd you call me here? Daniel complained, only to be berated by his father on the spot. Don't be stupid, you cause a mess. Apologize to Lisa right now. What? What are you talking about? Daniel asked, bewildered. My father-in-law held out the envelope I had sent to their house. This letter, which was delivered to our house, he said. Hearing this, Daniel began to laugh with an air of confidence. Oh, the divorce papers. Lisa went and took my threats seriously and sent me the papers. She wouldn't be able to live without me, yet she's acting so foolishly. 
The problem is this document here, my father-in-law said, taking out a bill for consolation money from the envelope. Upon seeing it, Daniel's face turned pale. Consolation money? Lisa was the one who sent me the divorce papers. Why should I? Daniel stammered. I'd be the one to pay consolation money. She abandoned her duties as a wife, checks herself into a hospital, and I'm the one who owes consolation money. Daniel protested. Enough with all this, my father-in-law said, his voice filled with suppressed anger. He pulled out photographs and a report from the envelope. These are the evidence of your cheating, and here's the investigator's report. Looking at these, there's no doubt you're in the wrong. I can't believe what you've done. Seeing the photos and the report, Daniel turned pale. Lisa, when did you manage to get all this? I had started to suspect Daniel's cheating when he began coming home late, claiming it was for work. He would return each night smelling of women's perfume. At first, I thought he was just drinking at places frequented by women, but when I discreetly checked his credit card statements, I discovered he was dining at trendy restaurants and buying popular brands loved by young women. It was obvious he was spending money on dates with another woman. His behavior became more blatant over time. He started increasing the frequency of his affairs, finding opportunities during his outdoor work hours and even on weekdays. The detailed checks on my daytime activities were his way of avoiding running into me during his meetings with her. Still, I held on to the hope that he would return to me someday. However, Daniel trampled all over these feelings, showing no concern for me after the accident and treating me like a maid. At that moment, I decided to exact my revenge on him. As soon as Daniel left the hospital room, I took action. I contacted my lawyer and asked him to send the signed divorce papers and the bill for consolation money, which I had prepared in advance, to Daniel's parents' house. Knowing him, he was probably spending time with his mistress instead of going home to his family. My guess was spot on. Unlike my husband, my in-laws are upright people who would never approve of their son's cheating. Sure enough, upon receiving my letter, my father-in-law and his wife were quick to rush to my hospital room. Having learned everything Daniel stood there in a daze. So, Lisa, you knew about my cheating all along? Yes, of course, I replied, looking at him with icy eyes. You come home smelling like women's perfume, and you lavish your mistress with your credit card. It's so obvious it would be strange if I didn't know this. Plus, all your phone notifications were visible to me, so I knew exactly when and where you were meeting your mistress. Thanks to that, it was easy to gather evidence. I'm sorry. I was just tempted. I wasn't serious about the divorce. I thought you would come back home right away, Daniel stammered. Even if you weren't serious, I am. I don't want to continue a marriage with a husband who doesn't even worry when his wife has an accident and tries to make her do household chores. You were having fun with your mistress while I was hospitalized, weren't you? I accuse. Hold on, calm down. You're a housewife, right? You wouldn't be able to make a living if you left me. Don't be stubborn. Just let the past be water under the bridge. Daniel pleaded. Excuse me, there's no way I can just let it slide. I became a housewife because you wanted me to. If I get divorced, I'll start working right away. I won't rely on you anymore. I asserted. Start working right away? How long do you think it's been since you quit your job? Your previous company has definitely found your replacement by now, he scoffed. Do you think I've just been doing housework all these years? I've been continuously studying business in my spare time, I revealed confidently. I've got a few ideas lined up so I could probably propose several projects now, I said confidently. It's not that easy, the economy is down everywhere. Even I, who's been working the whole time, can't get a promotion easily, Daniel retorted. Isn't that because you're incompetent at work? A person who dates their mistress during outdoor work hours has bigger problems than just capability. I shot back. What? What would you know? He snapped. I think I know more than you do. In fact, when I approached my former company, they said they wanted me back under the same conditions as before. I revealed. The same conditions? You'd be earning more than me, he said, shocked. Yes, indeed. It was all for nothing, even though you were the one who encouraged me to become a housewife and quit my job. If you didn't want to be overtaken by your wife's salary, maybe you should have tried harder instead of pulling me down, I retorted. Hold on, if that's the case, you don't need the consolation money, right? Please withdraw your claim, he pleaded. Excuse me, there's no way I'm withdrawing it. This consolation money is to make up for the wrong you did. You can't just cheat on your wife and ignore her without facing any penalties. 
I said firmly. I'm sorry, I really regret it. Please forgive me, he begged. I will never forgive you. It's not enough to just say you're sorry. You need to show it with your actions. Go to hell, I said coldly. Daniel was unconvinced, but in the end, my in-laws stood up for me, and he finally agreed to the divorce and the payment of the consolation money. After paying the money, Daniel seemed to continue his relationship with his mistress without learning his lesson. However, it seems his company found out about his frequent dating during outdoor work hours, and he ended up getting demoted and having his salary cut. To top it all off, Daniel, who had almost run out of savings due to the consolation money payment, was promptly dumped by his girlfriend. News about the cause of his divorce and his demotion spread throughout the company, and I heard that he completely lost his place there. On the other hand, I was able to be discharged from the hospital safely without any after-effects from the accident. I used the consolation money I received to move, and now I'm settling into my new home leisurely. My work after returning has been going smoothly, and life has been better since the divorce. That accident may have been a good catalyst for the divorce. I decided not to look back at the past and strive forward to a new life.